Welcome back. We've been having a lovely time here. Actors Leslie Ash and Martin Kemp are still with me this morning. And now we're joined by our team tamer and parenting expert, Lorene mm. Mara. Good to see you. Thank you. I'll be to chatting be to her in a moment. Uh, but first, uh, I've been asking to see your pictures of snowmen and snow ladies this morning. I've got a few more for you. Uh, Kira Batty from Eastbourne sent this picture of her husband and children's igloo, uh, which he started <laughs> at 9 30 oh, yesterday. And she says, You can't move a muscle today. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. And it's a bit naughty, this one. Have a look at this one. Uh, Patricia and Colette emailed a picture of Summer, the snow woman, um, whose pants leave a lot to be desired. Uh, uh, thank you very much for all of those. Uh, let's hit the headlines then, Lorene, and have a look at the area affecting you parenting. And we've got a nice story because Amanda Holden has got her baby back home. She had a tough time giving birth um, to her second baby, who was premature as well. And uh, there's baby Holly and daughter Lexi. And according to the newspapers, uh, she's heading back into the Britain's Got Talent judging panel just next week. Week, so she's not giving herself too much time off. But no. what I want to talk to you about is the integration of a new baby and, you know, kind of families you go along, especially when you, your first child's about five or six years old. Yeah. You've kind of forgotten a little bit about how, you know, the sleepless nights and, yeah. and all that kind of stuff affects yeah. you. And then you've got the dynamics of a new child with your, with your first child as well. I think people often try to overcompensate, to be honest with you, and they buy lots of presents and they say, oh, you're going to have a new baby and here's a... Three thousand pound doll's house, and you know, <laughs> don't be jealous, <laughs> right? And all that exaggeration. So, but I mean, that's what they do. And I think that if you're very, just kind of very low key about the whole thing, you know, there's a baby in mummy's tummy. Can you see it move? Can you see this? What's going to happen? Where's he going to sleep? He, she, going to sleep when he gets here? What's it going to be like? What we're we going to do if he cries? Why would he be crying? Just keep it simple, you mm. know, make it real. Mm. I think that the complications come when people start to, to make a big deal out of it. And it, well, I've heard parents turn around and say, it won't make any difference. <laughs> <laughs> it won't make any difference. Well, I think if, uh, yes. If a child can talk, you know, they, their fear is that they're not going to be loved as much. Yeah. Or, well, how did you two deal with it? The second child coming home, do you remember? I, I was a second child. Um, but, um, you know, I, I can't really remember that But for your back. kids, did you do but anything special? But for my kids, no, I think we did what you, you said. Yeah. You know, just took it quite easy. I mean, they notice things like you in your tummy and you try and hear it and stuff like that. Yeah, we did it quite simply. Yeah, you know? and I think they just accept it. And I think then what happens is that a lot of parents, when the child comes, when the first child starts to cry or make a fuss, they then overcompensate again by going, oh, putting that baby down and picking this one up. Yeah. So, what you know, you're setting a, a mm. pattern of behaviour there, aren't you? Mm. Mm. Just being consistent. Just get on with it. Mm. Just get on with it. I was very yeah. lucky. My second child was a boy. So I had to toughen him up from the beginning. Did you? Just cope with it. When he was three days old. <laughs> when he was three days old, you said, listen, yeah. get on with it. Life's yeah. tough. Absolutely. Cope with it. Absolutely. Yeah. And now yeah. he knows how to deal with those situations. Yeah. He's got no yeah. psychological repercussions. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> <laughs> We've got a call for you. Uh, let's get Celia on the line. Hello. Hello. Thanks for calling us. Hello. Th thank you for calling us. Thank you for having me. And you want to talk to Lorene about your three-year-old? Yes, I do. Um, she's become very clingy in the last few months since her sister started school. Her sister just started school in September last year. And she's become very clingy. She won't leave me alone. If I walk out of the room, she'll scream out and run after me. Even if I go into the loo, she'll scream and bang the door and she wants to get in. She just won't leave me alone. She always wants to be in contact with me. Um, a lot of the time she'll try and pull my clothes up so she can be flesh to flesh with me. Um, and I just don't know what to do. My husband says I'm encouraging it, and so it's going to continue. Um, I don't want to push her away and make her feel unwanted, so I, I just don't know how to deal with it. Okay, what, when you, what do you do? Do you then pick her up? Do you, if you go to the loo and she's banging on the door outside, what do you do? No, I, I, I lock the door and I tell her, I'll, when I'm out, you can have a cuddle, um, you know, just wait for mummy, just give me five minutes. But mm -hmm. she'll just keep screaming outside the door. Okay, I would have a conversation that goes like this, and I am aware that she's three, but I would have a conversation that goes something like this. When mummy needs to go to, let's take the loo situation, mummy needs to go to the loo, what do you think you could do? Here's your puzzle, here's your book. You could sit outside the loo with your book and reading your book or playing with your dolly or whatever the case may be until I come out. What's going to happen if you shout, right? Am I going to answer you if you shout? 
no. So when I come out, let's try it and see what happens. Try it, and when you come out of the loo, I'm sorry to keep using the loo, but when you come out, <laughs> when you come out of the loo, you say, "Wow, you did so well there! You didn't bang, you didn't shout, you were really, really good. Thank you so much for being such a good girl." So we're again, we're working on the positives of her behaviour rather than buying into that demanding behaviour, and try and do that all the time. But don't. Do you actually say, "I'm going to the loo," or "I'm"? Going Going to do this, or I'm going to do that, no, or do I you just? I just, I just try and get out. If she's distracted. I just quickly right. get out and okay. just go. <laughs> Yeah, I would actually say, okay, I need to just do this, whatever this may be, and I'm going to be with you in a couple of minutes when the big hand, get a clock, when the big hand goes to there and the little hand goes to there, right? They can mm -hmm. see it, mm -hmm. it's visual, they don't have to be able to tell the time, but they can certainly see the time, mm -hmm. they can see the clock moving, and I'll be back, and then we can do your jigsaw puzzle. Always prepare. Kids don't like it. They go into a panic when you suddenly say, quickly get your coat on, we're leaving right now. Yeah. <laughs> right? I, I think kids as well need to realise that from a very early age that you have to have your own space, that you have to have your own time. Everything can't be by a clock. It has to be, OK, I've done this with you now, so now I have to do this. Because people, parents do have to work, they, especially a lot of parents it's nowadays have to work it. on a it's laptop. It's preparing it, isn't it? Yeah. It's preparing yeah. for what's going to happen rather than just springing it on them mm. at the last minute. Yeah. And it may be that when you go to the toilet, Celia, she turns around and you're not there and yeah. that's what okay. throws her into the panic. Thank you, Celia. I okay. hope that helps. Uh, good luck with that. Uh, another headline for you to have a look at, which I, I want to kind of put this, qualify this a little bit because it's a study that's been done saying that no divorce is ever good for kids. You know, people say, I had a good divorce. They've looked at three different types of divorces. One where the parents have the good divorce, they get on really well, they communicate all the time. Another one where there is a, a single parent and the other partner has nothing anymore to do with the kids. And then the third kind where they kind of operate in parallel lives, they have very little communication, uh, they don't do very much at all together, but, you know, they're, they're there, they're both involved in the children's lives. And what this study found was there was no more likelihood in any of those situations for the child to have delinquent behaviour, to be uh, using alcohol early, or any, the, each divorce actually produced the same results. Mm. It doesn't necessarily compare to the situation, obviously, you know, in a family where they've all stayed together and the garden is full of roses, you know, so Don't who knows? Do those. those kids could be just as delinquent, <laughs> yeah. is what yeah. I'm saying, you yeah. know, so, yeah. Yeah. so yeah. Absolutely. you know, it's saying kind of no <clears throat> divorce works better than any other, but it seems, you know, I can't imagine a household where they're shouting can be, you know, no. any better than, I, you know, if, you, if your two parents are getting on well, surely that's better. I, I think that um, if you speak to children, what they will do is they will remember what it was like at home. And they will often remember the negative things far more than they remember the positive things. So they will remember that mum and dad shouted at each other, mm -hmm. that they fought with their brother. They will always remember these things far more. So I always say to parents, if you're going to separate, then make sure that the conversations you have, that you disagree with about each other, are not in front of the children. Mm -hmm. For God's sake, grow up. Have your conversations outside of the earshot of children. Mm. Meet and have a coffee. If you can't bear to look at each other, do it on the phone. Anything, anything, but not to let their children, no, your it's a children. People are going to argue. It's They're going to disagree. Sense. I can't it's see. You common know. sense. You know what child wants to hear their father call their mother a so and so and so and so and ditto. You know, and the mm. same. And the uh, sorry, and the opposite way round. Sorry, and the opposite way round. Where the mm. don't do it in front of your kids because the message long term is that for a boy to hear his mother spoken to like that, it makes him defensive. But it also gives a message that women can be spoken to like that yeah. and the same the other way around mm -hmm. right it's about respect and common sense for goodness sake mm -hmm. she speaks sense doesn't she well i think what's really sad is that in that situation a lot of the time is that the kids are used as pawns mm -hmm. so in the middle of a big fight mm -hmm. that's going off which is filled with adrenaline yeah, yeah. That a lot of the times you can't stop and say okay child go in the other room while we have an argument and they are in the middle naturally and while your adrenaline is flowing and you're in the middle of that argument those children are, are used as pawns mm. in the hope that when the father's having his say that the 
child is taking it in, yeah, mm -hmm. listen to dad, I'm right, aren't I? Mm -hmm. And um, well, vice true. versa. And I think yeah. that does yeah. happen, but it's, an, it's a natural process. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the time you can't separate the mm -hmm. child from the parents. You've got to make the effort, I guess, in a long term you for the kids. Yeah. Yeah. Because I know, you can I know take if you try, but in the, in, the middle of, uh, mm -hmm. in the middle of that adrenaline filled argument, it is very difficult. Guys, and you can do it, but it is difficult. Loved having you all here today. Yeah. <laughs> a great debate. Uh, we're finished, though. We're out of time. Lorene, thank you. Again. Leslie, good mm -hmm. luck. And of course, Martin as well with uh, the film, which is out on DVD. Uh, we've got another pack show for you tomorrow. James Alexandru is in on his play, and Nolan talks about her campaign against child abuse. And Zara Bond is back 10 past 11 right here on Channel 5. If you want to be live with Gabby, why not join our studio audience? Just call us now on 0207 173 555. Get a seat and get on TV.